Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 84. It's uh, CES week, so we gathered our gadget nuts to uh, see what we're interested in this week. Uh, I'm Sorg, and uh, with me, as a, a, a back with us to join us for the first time this year, <laughs> he, back from Lumberjack School, is Rob De La Creta. Is it pop out those pancakes? Is your, is your heat on? <laughs> <laughs> My heat is on, um, but this hat is very comfortable. Hmm. Uh, yeah, sorry, I uh, I totally ditched last week. Um, I had an emergency in the studio. Something was on fire. To... Please tell me something was on fire. <clears throat> uh, to be perfectly honest, um, sometimes certain applications don't jive with other applications that are running several other big important things that might ship in a few hours. Oh, oh, yeah, it was one of those things. Oh. I had to fix the thing so I could send the thing out so we could stay in business. Everything work out all right? Yeah. Good to hear. Good to yeah. hear. And uh, also with us, return is AJ. Hi. Virtualpotholes.wordpress.com. That is correct. That is the blog, the blog, blog of Nonix. Uh, I came here because I need to defeat Ryan Seacrest in talking about technology. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Because Ryan Seacrest shouldn't do that. <laughs> exactly and on the couch he's playing some sonic but he's with us chachi if chachi says dot net chachi plays.com do we have to say that another 20 times this no. show no what are you doing you're you're not chachi plays.com chachi's playing right now i'm what playing you, sonic what are you playing let's see if i got sonic. your uh, i got a crotch cam going playing on here sonic. Uh, sonic playing sonic Wee. <laughs> Wee. so he's going to be involved and also with us mm. it Chilla returns. I was going to hey, take the that? night off, but I figured you would have yelled at me. You're not allowed to take nights off. No, you're not. Because, you know, Rob's allowed to take nights off, but God forbid someone else try to. <laughs> Jeez. Taking that personal. I think Chachi's the... Uh, Chachi, have you had an actual night off of doing the awesome cast? Um, with the exception of the holidays when I convinced Sorg that we should take off? No. Okay. So that, means, that means that you've been on the show more than anyone. Yeah. At total. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That includes Sorg, because Sorg missed that one time. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's fact. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. But, hey, Chilla, how you doing? Not too bad. Welcome how are back. you guys? Welcome it's back. great to be back. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> so obsessed with watching Chachi. Let's yeah. play it, jumping on the thing. It gives me a bullseye. I jump. You know. Collecting the rings. Gotta Anyways, got to get those rings, yo. This is the awesome cast uh, where we we uh, uh, talk about the tech and uh, ChachiPlays.com. And ChachiPlays.com. Uh, hit us up. Contact at awesomecast.com. 724-25-ACAST. 724-252-2278. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, the Google Plus. And let us know what you think of this episode and everything else. Mm. So uh, let's get right into it. Uh, like I said, CS is going on. What are you guys interested in? What's catching your ear this Ab- week? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely yeah, nothing? not a thing. <laughs> really? There's, nope. I mean, I, I think I think companies have, are moving to making their own announcements. Mm-hmm. They're they're they don't want to play with others and share the stage. I think it's more of a. I, I think this is a good place that if you're a small company, you could definitely get breakthrough well, and, and. And we were having this discussion a little bit before uh, in the pre-show here. Um, so, I mean, we're talking about like, like, you know, uh, a- Apple already s- stepped away from, from Mac yeah. world, uh, Microsoft's doing the same thing with CES, uh, Ballmer at the announcement said it doesn't fit our, our release schedule. Why do, why should we do it? Um, so, and plus, you know, guys like Apple create their own events, create their own excitement. Uh, so maybe, maybe, you know, Microsoft and some of these other big ones are looking to do the same thing. They really need their stuff out on the floor there to uh, to 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 get vendors to buy them. When you look at Logitech released uh, three devices the day before CES, which surprised me because mm-hmm. they're going to be there. Why not release your product? Wait, wait 24 hours mm-hmm. and, and release it with everyone else. Lenovo well, well, had some cool stuff. For... No, it brought, up more, <clears throat> it brought more attention could... to themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the reason that you're talking about it right now is reason enough for them to have done Mm-hmm. Right, but they're trying to get out in front of the news cycle of, oh, hey, if you, I mean, if you have, 
I have Google Reader. I have it set. I have The Verge and Gadget and Gizmodo, and all three of them are at CES. It is just a torrent of information that I could care less about at this point. Mm -hmm. Android tablet, Android tablet, giant Android phone, Android tablet, Android tablet, Android tablet. But what about all the Ultrabooks? I mean, okay, Ultrabook, Ultrabook, like... Ultrabook, <laughs> Windows 8, Ultrabook, Ultrabook, Windows Phone, that happened, that kind of thing. Connect, 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 Sesame Street, Ryan Seacrest, it, that's all it is. It's it just really, a giant. I, I, I've been looking at this as the, the, the show of a million failures for and, the next year. And even, you know, because I mean, you look at this stuff, you're like, well, that's a cool idea. Really, am I going to hear about this in six months at this point? Well, I mean, to be perfectly honest, the whole trade show thing. It's not doing well. As somebody who works in the industry, I can tell you it's not doing well. Just this in is, general, this isn't like this is probably going to be the last big year for South by Southwest to be a, a decently sized trade show. Okay, this is going to be one of the last years for CES and E3 for anybody to actually care about because it doesn't make you can as far as like bang for your buck. Like everybody was saying, it makes so much more sense to pull off to your own event. You get a much more focus. People care. The people who are there absolutely care about what you have to say mm -hmm. not they sort of kind of care about what you have to say because you happen to make electronics no they care about what microsoft has to say or what apple has to say and they create a buzz around it mm -hmm. so why waste all the money and trust me it's a lot of freaking money mm -hmm. to go to one of these trade shows when you can do your own gig on your own time and not worry about it hey. the, the problem there is that because it's just as much money to do it by yourself. And there are a lot of companies who go to CES who don't have the ability to generate the buzz like an Apple or a Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Even Nokia had to have their own event here because they couldn't do it by themselves. Yeah. And they, they did yeah. one earlier in 2011 when they said, hey, we're dropping Sydney and we're going to Windows Phone. That is a huge announcement in Nokia land. The problem is, is that it's not a huge announcement tech industry wide in America and that didn't generate the buzz that I think a lot of it that, that it should have I mean that was effectively the death of late 90s early 2000s Nokia and Nokia is now licensing an OS they're effectively they're no better than Samsung or any of the other various you know companies that make handsets now and that's to me is just this to me it's an issue and none of these companies that go to CES are capable of sitting down and saying, yes, we can take this event, we can take an announcement, and we can do whatever it is that we want to, we can announce whatever it is that we want to on our time. They don't have that ability. They don't have that buzz. They don't have that strength. And I think that's why CES still sticks around. However, did you see RIM's table? I've seen job fairs with better displays. <laughs> it was terrible. It was, it was three playbooks, wasn't it? It was three playbooks and a table with a tablecloth on it and a sign that said Blackberry behind it. It was hilarious. See, I heard I heard they were doing a big push. No, Blackberry no, I heard because it was their last kind of go at it. That, right? that table, that table with the, with the three te or with the three uh, playbooks on it, that was in a, a segregated room that only certain people had access to. Okay, so that's not. So that's I don't know display. if that's okay. their display. I, I I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, that, that's some other room that Lenovo had a huge, a huge table at cause they released 12, was that the, 12 um, new devices. Was, was that the, was uh, last the preview show from a couple nights ago or something like the, uh, the, the digital experience or it's whatever digital it was. experience. Oh, room, so that's, yes. that's, I mean, everybody's got a table, you know, that, yeah. that's, 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 uh, that's, that's not the floor, you know? So, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that room, that room was nice to, to watch because you could actually see things going on instead of just floods of people i'm trying to see if i can find a pic of of what their booth is looking like this year and, and i agree with aj on the on the side of if you're a small company trying to start something up and get the buzz going like i i never paid attention to the iCade. it was cool i saw it at bed bath and beyond i could throw my ipad in, in a little arcade <laughs> and whatever but but with the buzz they're generating with their their mobile device and they have a more portable version of their arcade device i think they could they could definitely be come out on top in the mobile gaming arena and there's a little bit of like a what there's some of rim's booth there i guess i don't know i i, I think with a company <clears throat> like icade it like i i realize they're gonna sell a ton of the product anyhow because no one wants to spend the money to get the big one mm -hmm. but 
for something like that, you gotta go big or go home. Mm-hmm. Don't mm-hmm. make, don't give me a miniature version. Well, of, I, I can see them giving your arcade iPad. I can see them like, giving a shot at that for the people that just have iPhones. But you know, the the iCade is more interesting. I, I don't know if anybody else had a chance to get the iMame when it was available for like two I days. Did, I did get it. Uh, but I was playing. I played through uh, the entirety mm. of the Simpsons arcade game the other day on my iPad. It was pretty cool. And I kind now I'm kind of considering that iCade. Uh, it, it's it's kind of seems like it'd be kind of nice. Yeah, you know. You and I think a, it's you want a killer little app or a killer little thing that is coming out of CES that I saw. They announced a product earlier in the year, <clears throat> and I really like the idea of it. I don't know how well it'll work. Uh, There's a company called Blue Stacks, which allows you to run Android apps on Windows. I thought that was an ingenious little idea because there's people there are people who do develop Android apps and even iPhone apps who the only place you can get it is on the iPhone or any Android devices and you can run uh, this sort of stuff and they announced uh, today that they will have uh, full Windows 8 uh, support mm-hmm. and that's the sort of thing this is a company that couldn't come out and say, yeah, we're doing, we have this big thing, we're going to invite all the media, and the media's going to go, who the hell are you? Exactly, exactly. I mean, somebody... And this is why CES exists. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's a really Apple weird... It's like a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what that word is. Um, so CES is really great for the small companies, but for the big companies, like the Nokias and companies like that, um, they, for as much as they can afford to have a press day and invite people to their own campus... Um, they can afford to have small events like that. And what happens with the large companies is the only reason that the large companies keep doing it is because they can't be the only company that pulls out. And so the large companies are footing the bill to keep the event going. So the small guys like Bluestacks can come in and, and have like a legitimate opening and say like, hey, I've got this thing and I haven't, you know, I want to show it to the people at CES because these are my people and that makes sense. And financially it makes sense for the Bluestack people. But you want to... Uh, have a booth at CES, it will probably cost you, it's going to start around like $15,000 or something. That's not a whole lot of money when you're selling in the app store and you're actually like popular or when you're, you know, you've got $200,000 in like a small amount of venture capital funding you want to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about what RIM does or what Microsoft does, you're talking about literally over a million dollars a day in an investment with little return at all, like relatively no return. Especially when you're sitting next to all of your other large competitors. Mm. There's always good buzz about little gadgets. But those large guys, they're, just, they're doing it because everybody else is doing it. Well, is I it- think that they could do something uh, that a company like RIM or a company like Apple is not going to do that sort of thing. They're going to stick with their own, uh, their own, <clears throat> their own announcements. However... Mm. Uh, rumored, actually, I uh, factualized this wasn't a rumor. Uh, Greg Joswiak from Apple was actually walking the floor of CES today, just kind of taking a look at everything. Yeah, I heard about um, something like that. It's probably trying he, to figure uh, out he took a look at Sony's booth and said, uh, Yeah, disappointed. <laughs> Didn't really see anything I was generally interested in. But there are things that are in there, like uh, uh, one of my favorite things, and something I want is showing my age. I want a washer and a dryer that tells me when it's done on my phone. <laughs> Samsung, <laughs> Samsung has it. I've thought about building that. Samsung. Well, no, no, no. Samsung has that now. It's yeah. coming out later this year, and it's going to have uh, an Android and iPhone app called yeah. Smart Home. And you can actually and it's I think, tell you, and you can even run it. It's not just going to tell you when it's done. It's going to allow you to run your washer and dryer from your phone. That's the crap I want. Those are consumer electronics. Those are the things I want in my life. Chilla? Yeah, that's actually what I was going to say. You can start it, and that's what I like. I mean, I could be upstairs, load it up, and I'm about to leave. So you always kick forget off about washer. it to go back down and yeah. then switch it up. Now, see, now that would be nice. I want I want my, my washer to be able to throw the wash over <laughs> to the dryer. <laughs> well, they do have those. They do. They do? They actually have those. They're, uh, they're Japanese, uh, obviously. But it's a, it's a device. It's a washer and a dryer together, together in, in one. the same box. Um, for a, it's mostly for space saving. So it's also very small. It's not anywhere near the size of most American washers and dryers. But it does do what it does. Um, but what I love about it is that I am notorious uh, for forgetting that I put something in 
the wa- that I put something in the washer that needs to go into the dryer. Mm-hmm. And so you could just set it and just hit, I need this to rinse. And then a rinse, and then you know that your clothes are at least generally clean and they're not just kind of mildewy. You give them like a quick rinse, maybe a quick full cycle again. And then you could throw them in the dryer and then you know when the dryer's done and you can set it to like humidity levels so you can tell when they're done and it's not just, oh yeah, that might be done. It's been 60 minutes or 40 Sonic, minutes. Uh, or long Sonic's, your dryer runs. Sonic's in the chat saying uh, he wants a dryer that will... We've just spent... Your phone can start the dryer 10 minutes before you get up so you can have warm clothes. Warm clothes and they're not That'd wrinkly. Amazing. We, we just spent 10 minutes talking about washers and dryers. <clears throat> this is CES. This is a I mean, this is electronic show. Yes. On top of that, though, uh, I did. If someone would make it, you could have separate washer and dryer that would drop the the wet clothes into the dryer, like a trap door. Yeah, it would just it would <laughs> just be stackable trap door. No, it would just stackable be a trap, trap door. Yeah, a stackable trap door, where uh, the bottom of the washer would have a door that goes down into the dryer. Well, the gravity's I, not going to pull everything down. Yeah, 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 something gets caught. Like a something's going to get caught, and then you're going to have like <laughs> your dryer running and you know engulfing the heat of the entire house. I tried. I don't know. I mean, what this, you would have to do I mean, is you'd have to have like okay, let's let's get into some engineering here, kid. <laughs> you would have to have like a door that went instead of dropping down, actually went this way and actually like slid back, and then you would have to have a piece that came down and pushed everything out of the washer. That's Maybe you get a sock too. that gets left behind, but you're not going to have everything. I left really, behind. really think we're overthinking this. Because no, we're not. I, I did a quick. We're, we're thinking not, about practical it electronics. It already exists. I did a quick Google because there's. The, I'm finding white washer dryer combos that are just one unit. Well, and that's what that's, that's what, what AJ was talking yeah. about. Okay, yeah, yeah. but this is for people who don't want to spend the cost. For a washer dryer, all right. Dryer now that's we just need a cubic year. feet of washers and dryers. This is where we are in our lives right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that interested me today, I talked to I talked to a Microsoft rep or technical account manager, well, and he just... said that he can't get a lot of information on roadmaps anymore because the upper people at Microsoft have decided they want to be more like Apple, and they want to give the wow factor, so they're going to stop releasing as much information as they used to. Which that's I don't know if that's good for corporations. Jerk, jerk movements right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, um, I mean, no, Microsoft is pretty. It's Ma- terrible. I mean, we're 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 planning we're planning into 2014, 2015, and they're like, well, we can't give you any. We can't give you much past 2012. Much, yeah. Right? So I mean, it, it, here, if you want if you want to lose a business market to Apple real quick, start being more like Apple. Maybe, are they getting that cocky because like because Microsoft is that into the the enterprise? Well, the interesting thing is. Uh, you at, at work, all we hear about is go to the cloud, go to the cloud, go to the cloud. Yeah. And they spent five seconds on it last night. And I, and, and much like everything else that they talked about that already existed, it wasn't anything new. But if you want to go more into that field, mm-hmm. they're not they're not talking about it. They're not up playing it. Show me Office 365. I, yeah, I hear yeah why didn't they do SkyDrive? I hear SkyDrive is a great thing. And you know what? It's cross-platform. Mm-hmm. So, so show me, you know what, show me something I can use today mm-hmm. if you want to upsell something that probably not a lot of people know about. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's mm-hmm. going to be the geeks that, that are definitely watching and paying attention. But for this, it seems it's more media. Media will play it up more. I mean, sell sell what you already have and get more people on board. Is it is it that... It, are they are they just uh, thinking that the, 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 the fanboys, the... Are the people heading these IT departments, therefore, they don't have to really advertise it to them, these, these features? Or, or they just don't know what they have, maybe? They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, and, and see, I, I think that has a lot to do with it. They don't, they, they've never gone in, they've never had to deal with a fanboy. Mm-hmm. So they've never had to deal with someone coming into a corporation and saying, well, I like this device, I like the iPad, or I, no like, other option, right? I like the playbook. Right. At least used to be no, exactly there was no option. Mm-hmm. Now you're starting to get into options, and they don't know how to. Com- they actually don't know how to compete because they've been riding <laughs> on top of the mountain for so long. They don't know how to how to fight back. Yeah, in for that enterprise, department. we want the cheapest, secure solution. Mm-hmm. If you can't tell us that in advance, in advance, we're going to go with someone who can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all there is to it. I mean, the thing that surprised me—they spent as much time last night talking about. Other people's 
ultra books and and actual hardware as they did their own products that they make yeah and and all they talked about was their oems and there's no compromises so i'll be interested to see they're talking about this no compromise solution where everything is going to be seamless my phone my xbox my tablet my home pc and that's great but if you're going to if you're saying there's no compromise i want Metro on the mall. That means no excuses. And I, but I also want my desktop on the mall. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine rolling out Metro to sixty thousand users, most of them probably forty-five and up. They wouldn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't know how to use their computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They That's would true. be like, "What is this? Where's my start menu?" Right. And I, I, I think that to Chilla's point, where you're talking about the cloud and how. Microsoft didn't talk about that yesterday. Um, I think that's a testament to what what cloud computing, at least in my mind, should be. The idea behind cloud computing is that it's not what you think about. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not something that you're looking at. It's not something tangible, like you know, my tower that's down here on the floor. It's not it's not tangible, like like my iPhone. It's just there. And that's why they call it cloud. And you don't it's, notice. It's just a, it's a exactly. it's a logical concept. So you have things, and I think this this goes back to developers. This goes to uh, uh, infrastructure people like like me and you, John. Is that the cloud is just it's a concept, and you have to accept it as such, and that there are going to be significant changes. And you know what? I am going to use this term: paradigm shifting things. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah, I use that. <laughs> Drink. But it's 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 Bingo. something it's not something that you it's not it's not doing the same thing that we've done forever. Mm -hmm. It's not just putting it in another data center somewhere else. You have to change the way that you actually think about operating that. Mm -hmm. You have a developer who now basically has the tools to do whatever the hell they want to. They could write in any language they want to, run it on any operating system they want to. There's no infrastructure group saying, no, you can't do this. But at the same time, it's up to the infrastructure people at the top to say, okay, how can we provide all of these tools to developers to run their apps? And I think that's where Amazon comes in with their EC2 environment where they have a – you buy time. You're renting the infrastructure. You're renting where your things run from. Well, and, and Microsoft's kind of doing the same thing on, on the case of mm -hmm. you're Zero. paying for the disk you're using today. So if you have a bunch of users that, that don't have any data out and are being stored, well, then you're not paying for it. And tomorrow, if you want to dump 50 terabytes out there, okay, you're paying for 50 terabytes. Right. Whereas, whereas right now, I mean, you take the infrastructure shop and you say, okay, I'm going to buy a server. And you have mm -hmm. to think about the next three years and what you're purchasing in disk and processor and memory. Whereas and they'll you have just to think allocate about the growth behind it and how much you're going to have, how many users you're going to have going in, you know, going forward. But I, and, but yet again, I mean, I think Microsoft could could look at you looked at what what Adobe did. They you could pay for Photoshop by the month. That's right. That's right. You which, know what? Which is a huge thing for for uh, you know mm. uh, freelancers and and people just couldn't afford that price tag before. I, I'm not. I a, mean, I, I know I know somebody that 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 hopped on getting the whole After Effects uh, Premiere pack because they finally had an opportunity to do that with that subscription. It, g give me Office Professional. For one month, and then maybe I only use Word next month, or I only exactly. I, I only use exactly. whatever next month. And also, give me a reason to use it. Can, can, I, can I toss another wrinkle in this whole cloud thing, and exactly what you're talking about with like not really mm. owning Office? Uh, have you guys seen what OnLive's been announcing this week? Mm -hmm. This is interesting. They're they've you know OnLive. I, I've talked about. I've been a big fan of the technology. I want to see where it goes. Where they're basically rendering these video games off in the cloud. And you can run it on anything. It's going to be running on. It's already running running on Android tablets. You can go play Batman Arkham City. You know, uh, it'll be on the iPad here soon. But this is going to be out uh, in, in in a short time. Uh, basically, they're going to do the same thing in the cloud with Windows. Uh, put, put well, your... this 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 is the same thing that VMware has been doing with VMware View. Okay. And Microsoft has been doing with virtual desktops. And this, all, this even goes back to terminal services. Uh, 
in addition to going all the way back to the mainframe with <clears throat> effectively a, a, a dumb terminal in front of you, yeah. you know, you're, you know, you're diving into this window stream. This is this is VDI, is what this is. <laughs> you know what? I think Microsoft actually strategically placed themselves to be able to do this with their newer versions of Office and the ribbon. Mm -hmm. As much as I hate the ribbon, guess what? Everything is huge. I can press it with my finger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas older, I mean, to navigate some apps, I can't imagine going out to a virtual environment with Windows running on my iPad. And using all the apps. Mm -hmm. They're just not meant for a touchscreen, which is where I think they're trying to get with Metro. I think mm -hmm. they're really going to make a run for making it touch compatible. But, you, I mean, you look at a lot of apps and they're – throw them in a Citrix environment, throw them, throw them in a virtual environment mm -hmm. and, and serve them up. And they're not finger usable. I, I have enough problems where I have to – like I use LogMeIn on my iPad, mm -hmm. on my iPhone – and uh, a lot of times I get into that point where usually you can grab a file, I toss it in compressor, so I literally drag it in the, co the compressor, but I'm putting it on my old iMac, you know, whatever connection I'm on, that's not an easy task, and I don't know exactly where I drag it, and, 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 and it, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a <coughs> Mac OS system, it's, or it's Final Cut, it's whatever, it's not built for my iPad. Right. You know, same, same <clears throat> issue. Uh, I, I think more, if, if, you, if you're, you as a company want to get into an Apple. We've, we've met with Apple multiple times about this. They are more than willing to come in and set up development time and help us develop applications. Mm -hmm. They will not come in. They said, we will not come in and put in a Citrix environment for you because it's, it's, it gets torn. We've done it before and it gets torn out within six months because no one can use the apps. I mean, I don't, could you imagine building a PowerPoint <laughs> via, via a virtual desktop on your device? It'd be so hateful. <laughs> That's not to say that there aren't PowerPoint tools for the iPad. This keynote, right. I mean, this keynote, keynote exists, yeah. and it works, but it's designed for the iPad. Right. This is not. This is something that Microsoft knew, and I, I applaud Microsoft all day for Metro. Um, they finally gave themselves a touch interface. There's actually a step right mm -hmm. now. They're almost. Kind of, sort of, a step ahead of Apple but, when yeah, but, it comes to a touch interface that they can put on everything. Right, and I agree with that. But I think one of the major problems you're going to then run into is battery, which they're going to come up and say, "Oh, we have the ARM processors coming." Well, and now they're saying those might be slated for fourth quarter 2013. Is it? Isn't that well, you mentioned the strict OEM policies? Isn't that the kind of stuff that they're trying to circumvent? Isn't that on the drawing board for them? What the, the uh, for, about about they're going to run the entire the one sh the one device they showed was in the uh, the Nvidia Integra okay. quad core chip. Okay. But the problem is, so to rewrite all your apps, which all you have to do is recompile, as long as it you developed it in Visual Studio, mm -hmm. you recompile for the ARM processor, mm -hmm. much like you used to for the phones for the old Windows mobile phone, and then it'll run on that. But they're not going to have the OS ready until late. I think it's twenty. It's twenty thirteen. Yeah. Late twenty thirteen. But you I know the a lot. Boat. I mean, you're that's 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 Microsoft. That's Microsoft being real hopeful that it's just a recompile. Uh, I and I, I agree with you. I would, and I'm guessing that that having it out by like twenty thirteen to run on ARM is going to be a, a stretch. So I think you, there's going to be a lot of developers who are going to have to invest a lot of time. To making sure that their app works 150 percent on ARM. So you're, but so you're back to you're back to a three pound device with maybe two hours of battery life. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. I just don't see them making it. I mean something somebody's going to come out with something. Maybe it's like, heck, Amazon could take over with another version of the Kindle Fire, and they're in everyone's hands. And now you got. 50% market share for Apple, 50% market share it, it for, really for Amazon. It's, it's, and it's buy. not just Apple's not your only competitor now. We found there's finally a tablet out there that that isn't being, you know, uh, looked over because because of Amazon behind it, you know. And, and who expected that? I think a lot of people expected that when they said that they were going to put their ecosystem behind it and their the initial announcement of the Kindle Fire mentioned not one spec 
and mention everything that Amazon has to offer. <laughs> I, I think one of the things that Microsoft's depending on is they're depending on the like the Connect. The mm -hmm. Connect for Windows is coming out. It's two hundred and fifty dollars. It's more than the Xbox version because they have to have the near near view camera on it. Longer cord. Wait, it's shorter, it shorter cord. Shorter cord. Shorter cord. Whatever. Doesn't come with the game. It doesn't come with the game. It only runs on Windows Seven. Okay, so now I'm an XP or Vista user at home. Ah, oh, man, I gotta spend whatever it is, probably a hundred bucks on on a Windows Seven home license, or I gotta buy a whole new computer. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I think they're going to try to drive the market with their, with things like that. <clears throat> You're going to have to be on IE9 to run certain things. I mean, we, we're 63,000 XP licenses strong. We, I think we have 20 Windows 7 machines and maybe three oh, Vista. <laughs> so, I mean, there's companies out there. I don't know for you, Chachi. I mean, what, what is your core OS? What is it? XP still. So, I mean, you look at these companies and, I mean, no, they're not. Microsoft, the one thing Microsoft can say is, yeah, we sold, we sell, what is it, seven licenses a minute or something? Mm -hmm. well, they sell it because it's bundled with a new PC that then we bring in and reinstall XP on it. Mm -hmm. And we will only go to people that, or, or corporation companies, OEMs, that will still have XP drivers for their hardware. I mean, I, we're, there, you're seeing a maturation of those of those OS. i mean how many changes have, have happened even to the mac os in the last like three versions i haven't seen too much since what was i started on leopard or something um and, and i don't see much benefit I, I we have a couple windows 7 uh computers around the house and i don't see any benefit using that other than uh microsoft requiring something to work on like this connect thing yes. um and, well there was something where halo 2 was required to have vista when they came out for the pc you know, a, a, okay. a three or four year old Xbox One game. Yeah. A, why? You know, um, yeah, a, XP mat matured and, and there's no there's no reason to move on. But they're still supporting XP for another two years. They kind of have to. <laughs> and I'm sure it's going to be like 95 where, you know what, it's going to be two years from now. And they're going to say, oh, you know, we'll still at least create critical critical service packs mm -hmm. for for holes in the os i i mean all, all these systems down here get an update like every week or two yeah and just like really okay you know at least i know they're still supposedly secure yeah so, so i i just i mean microsoft has to do something to actually they actually have to compete instead of just being on top of the map right exactly so hey you know who else is trying to compete uh of course we we know you know we're talking about cloud we're talking about what microsoft doing uh but tvs are a big thing all over CES uh, is a consumer electronics show. Uh, somebody's trying to make a comeback. Um, something that Mr. Justin Timberlake might own. MySpace TV is introducing social viewing to launch on Panasonic Vera HD TVs. So wrong. <laughs> um, so, so uh, yeah. So Listen, if he can bring sexy back, he can bring MySpace back. On your TV. False. Yeah. I'm gonna have glitter graphics everywhere when I watch Dancing Animated with the Stars. Animated gifs guys. all over your TV. It'll be amazing, amazing. But I mean, what is it? What does it offer? Is it does it offer anything different than all of the other companies like Showtime and and Fox <coughs> and whatever? According USA. to them, uh, it will fully integrate social and television in new ways. And Adam mentioned this isn't even an announcement. This is just buzzwords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna. That doesn't actually mean that's, anything. This isn't. Uh, owners did, did uh, Google TV do that? They'll be able to download the software, which my yeah, Google TV did that. Uh, yeah, you know, what's the most Samsung televisions have it built in, most Vizios and all that. Like, it's all it's the, the same stupid thing where you can get Netflix because it's built in your TV and you can check your Twitter screen on a 55 inch screen, your Twitter feed uh, on a 55 inch screen because that's a good idea. It's so weird on the Xbox, by the way. Now, one of the, one of the things I was interested in coming out of the TV market was someone was saying that. There, some of the manufacturers, and I think they were saying Apple was talking about doing this in the buzz, but mm -hmm. the, you would actually be able to upgrade your TV, obviously not size, mm -hmm. but things like the processor and software, everything would be processor based in memory. There would be a module that you could pull out of the back of your TV, upgrade the processing power, download an, a software update, and boom, your TV now does all this additional stuff. Mm -hmm. Which I think, I mean, I think that would be worth it. 
I think that'd be great. I mean, we are always seeing already seeing uh, Roku with their uh, Roku on a stick that mm-hmm. does yeah. certain TVs. Uh, a, a certain and something enabled TV has to support this. I don't think I can use my picture USB on my Vizio upstairs. I bought for five hundred bucks. The only but, thing that makes me question the idea of a, of upgrading uh, controller modules on TVs is that when you consider the cost of manufacturing a TV at this point, like if you buy a brand new Samsung or whatever. Most of that money of that thousand dollar TV or whatever is going into that control module. Mm-hmm. So, would you rather have a whole brand new TV, or would you rather spend eight hundred dollars on this little boxy thing to upgrade the thing you already have? Yeah, especially these days. I mean, I, I mean, TVs, TVs still last a while. I mean, yeah, because so, unless you're going with like industrial grade televisions, it's not glass. Yeah, it's all plastics, oh, and yeah. it's super cheap. Okay. And the LED screen, super cheap. It's all the controller that makes it expensive. Which is why, like, when somebody breaks an LCD, go ahead and call up a, you know, a repair guy. Be like, no, I'm not. It's not worth it to fix any of that stuff. Just mm-hmm. buy a new one. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and and speaking of the TVs, Google TV, which we laughed at Eric Schmidt just a few weeks ago. Um, <laughs> Everybody laughed at Eric Schmidt when he said apparently that. Apparently, they're like, I think they were literally paying people to put it on TVs because I, I think yeah. that was this is the only way it's going to happen is they pay you to to take it. And that's what's happening. It's 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 getting thrown on a bunch of TVs. Is the word coming out of CES right now? So Samsung's, a, or I'm sorry, not Samsung. He knew, Sony. He knew something backer. was going on. Sony. Okay. I Sony's mean, backing it big time. And the the other interesting thing is, is a lot of the of the tablet makers. All of a sudden, you're seeing a, a slew of Android tablets come out with an infrared port because they want your your Android tablet to be your remote controller oh, for all your components. Universal. universal so it's a remote. universal remote. I mean, I, I have the, the Harmony device that you just throw in the back of your room and it has an infrared transmitter and it hooks into your Wi-Fi. Mm. That works great. But now I don't even need that. I have my tablet and I can control everything. And the one interesting thing that I've seen come out of that Harmony's app for the iPad is really nice. I can see what a lot of people are watching, I can get, it's almost like IMDB, I can click on it, and then I can say, I want to watch this yeah, now. Isn't this the kind of stuff Microsoft promised years ago? Like, this kind of, like, device connectivity. And they, they showed it with Connect. And they yeah. got Connect, yeah, but, it, but, but, but you know, this kind of, having this device works with this device. Android's well, doing it but more than anybody, I think. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft is taking their baby steps. We've certainly talked before about, like, comparisons between the... Having the, uh, I'm bad with words tonight, but the, you know, everybody who owns every Apple device. Um, I don't have TV, or I'd probably have an Apple TV. But the idea of all those things working together and it no longer being like you have a personal computer and a phone and a tablet or whatever, but you create an ecosystem in your home and everything supports everything else. So you have a Microsoft Windows Phone 7 whatever thing that could work with your Xbox 360 and maybe your Xbox 360 is actually connected into your home environment. You can control all the lights in your house or your wish your washer dryer. Maybe all of these things are happening, but everybody's kind of like taking these really careful steps because nobody's really sure how to make it actually work in a way that people want to buy. Exactly. If you, if you, oh if you man, I can't buy it. Like, I would love to have the Xbox 360 while I'm playing call of duty. Tell me my dryer's done. <laughs> it auto pauses the game. No, I don't want to have to get up and go downstairs to check. I'm killing. I'm owning noobs right now. Yeah, I said own because I'm off pwn. Pwn is 97. It's 2012. Come on. I mean, I I, I I want to see the same thing. I want to see devices that interact seamlessly with each other, mm-hmm. which is why I think some people have gone the Apple route. Apple mm-hmm. creates everything. Everything works because they it's how they made it, and you can't. Everything works, and it's not going to be out and not uh, until they know it's going to work. Right. I mean, when's the last time they put out something that didn't talk to each other appropriately? Now, now what I'm interested in seeing is battery life mm-hmm. and a Bluetooth device that doesn't drain my battery within minutes. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's where where you need to get to to create this near field communications type arena of products where you can I can make a device and simply by being near my other device, it syncs. Microsoft has a great video of their the future, the the future of the world, where the woman walks out of the airport and she taps her glasses, and it takes all the incoming audio and automatically translates to English in her ear, and then she hops in the cab 
with her translucent phone and pays for and the cab with what? it and then gets the message from her kid. Not to discount Microsoft, because I don't know if anybody's been uh, paying attention to The Verge. Over, I think I watched these over the Christmas break, uh, to be honest. But there are some great videos they did where, they, where The Verge went to their experimental labs to see the stuff they're developing. It's functional stuff, and it's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, so, I mean, they got, they got, you know, much like we were talking about, I think, before the show about there's some people in there with some different ideas about, like, say, Windows 8 or Windows Phone. They're, you know, finally kind of taking shape. They got, they are, uh, there are a lot of things coming out of Microsoft that are more than just the next version of Office. How are we going to do a WordPress processor better? You know, um, so, I mean, I, I think it just, it, it just takes the right shift of people for that to finally fall in line. Like the Xbox, yeah, the, has, you know. I mean, how long did it take the Xbox to become where it's at? Yeah, you know. So, um, go lay down. What's that? Go lay down. Oh. <laughs> no, Sorg, I, go lay down. I, I won't lay down. <laughs> Sorg, lay down. Yeah, Oscar is like right here, right at my elbow, and he kept like nudging me, and I'm like, no, go lay down. And I thought I was on mute. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just on the internet. Lay See, down, Sorg. The last thing has caught my eye here for Sorg, lay down. Oh no. Uh, CES is uh, AT&T has going to launch an app center for Android that's launching in beta today. Um, this oh, is probably man, yesterday, why don't actually. I have that man, already? Man, don't, you, don't you wish you were that's on That's because I didn't want it. So they say, they, they say that the reason that Android is not selling apps is because there isn't a, an easy way to bill, you know, like on your phone bill. What? Um, Supposedly that's the reason, and uh, uh, so they isn't have. Isn't that called Google Checkout? Oh, yeah, man. yeah. I use Google <laughs> Checkout oh, everywhere. BlackBerry's app world uses PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> not kidding. Even if you buy things on the apps on the app world with PayPal, and you go into PayPal and to see that you you know you made a payment, it says DRI app world. So I don't know where my money went. <laughs> um, <laughs> And now I feel weird. But no, ATT, no, you, go lay down. You're done. <laughs> I think we just got a name for the show. I think we do. I think we do. But it, it's going to be, it's not just Android. Ads, it's going to be Android based, the store. But uh, it's also going to, uh, ATT thinks that HTML5 apps have failed thus far because there's no distribution or monetization. So. Right, because that's the only that's the reason anybody writes anything ever. Really? Got it. Okay. I, I'm not. I'm not buying that. All right. Yeah. Well, and All it's right. it's funny because um, Verizon will come into your shop if you want to do internal corporate apps and help you build an internal internal app store, and they have their own product that is it's the same thing that AT and T says they're going to offer to the public. They'll come in and help you create your own private app store, but obviously you need apps to put in it, and that's the main thing. Is 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 your company creating? It's just another apps. It's just another fracturing. Yeah, you know, for 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 these, you know, it, it's. And are they really presented? Is there anything any advantage for them going HTML five versus regular apps for something like Android? Well, it's the same idea that originally built the uh, iOS operating system before it was the iOS operating system before there was an app store when you weren't supposed to build apps for iOS because you were supposed to access websites that were applications built in HTML five. Yeah. See, and, well, now that would be nice because I mean that's what Microsoft's counting on is you develop an HTML5, it goes out to all your devices, it works. Mm -hmm. Just like how uh, Palm was hoping you were really going to develop in uh, JavaScript and jQuery for uh, WebOS. Yeah, that didn't work out. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I don't think I don't think the developers are going to allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I think. No, I mean that, that's what fought Palm is the developers weren't behind it. Right. The developers don't want it to happen because then you leave that app store type interface and, and it's really hard to track. If I give you a bunch of HTML code, okay, now you can take it and do whatever the heck you want. There's not it. much there's not much in the uh, in the uh, Chrome web store I noticed today uh, that you pay for. Right. You know, I, I, I was, I think, and that's the same thing. It's all HTML5 stuff. It's all browser based stuff. And it's cool. It all works. It, it's great. It, it works great, except the Crash Bandicoot game I was going <laughs> to play was not the PS1 one that I, lo I loved. Um, so there's a little bit of shadiness in there. But still, at least I didn't pay 99 cents for this thing that was, wasn't the real thing. Um, but if you're a developer, so all developers should give their stuff away for free. I mean, AJ, if you're going to develop, are you going to give it away for free? Uh, no, no, I... 
kind of need to make money off the products that I make. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't see at and stamp of approval being the reason why. You know what? <clears throat> I was going to develop an app, but I didn't feel like there was some overarching carrier behind things. <laughs> that would really turn my business around. I'm really l- glad that Death Star is behind this. When I is think AT- it- does AT- AT&T have that sort of out? Well, sh- crap! <laughs> Time to code, you guys! That's what you've been missing! But I think that's the one pe- the one reason a lot of people turn to Android. There is a lot of free apps. I mean, the one the one complaint I've heard from people that switch from from an Apple device or from an Android device to a, to an Apple device is... You know what? I got all this free content. And I had all these free games, and and Angry Birds was free, and now I got to pay for it. This is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, and I think I think that is the one thing that that a lot of people like about Android. It's free, mm-hmm. right? And then this goes back to what I was talking about earlier in the chat room, where uh, somebody asked me why I was down on Android, and I said, "Name me a killer app for Android." Yep. <laughs> Uh, I can't. I can't name one. I can't name a single one. Well, then the Angry Birds is cross platform. So Google Goggles. Uh, Google Goggles is cool. There, it's cool. But now, now everybody else has it too. Uh, yeah. Google Google Nav. I guess it's it's free on there. Yeah, I hear it's free. pretty good. Uh, None of these are killer apps. No, they're okay no, apps. No, they're, none they're, of them are killer apps. They're all okay apps, and they're also all developed by Google, not third party developers. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And this is the, then you can look at things like Path. You could look at Tweety before it got bought by Twitter. You could look at uh, Foursquare when it first came out. Uh, let's see here. ESPN Score Center first came out for the iPhone. Um, they have that new, They have a new Photoshop uh, app that's only available on Android for the tablet. Yeah, they have a whole set of, um, of apps that are only available on Android. But they are coming out for iOS, yeah. but they came to Android first. I hmm. wonder how much they paid for that. Yeah. I don't think they had to pay anything. I think I, I, I think they already were okay with not going with Mac or not going with Apple on that. Well, they already have a full suite of applications for iOS. Yeah, yeah. They already had they had yeah. stuff out there. I, they I have just, well, I, they have the because the applications that they have for um, iOS are all they interact with the Creative Suite, mm-hmm. but the applications that came out with for Android are they don't need to interact with other applications to work. Like one of them is a wireframing application for use with HTML5 and that's oh, Android wow. based. So it's completely independent. Yeah. Completely independent. Oh huh. yeah. Cause the ones they had for iOS were like, like uh, here's something, you know, to help your clipboard in Photoshop. Yeah. Like, or here's a paint palette and you could mix yeah, your palette. Yeah. The paint palette and the short they were panel. Nifty, and but kind of yeah. They were just like extensions of what you're already using with say Photoshop. So and um, I, and, I, and I, I haven't gotten to play with them yet, but I mean that that's something that excites me for Android only mm-hmm. because I am so disappointed in the tablet experience. I am so disappointed in app stretching and poor app user experience. You know what? That's fine. Let me let me. I, I'm not happy with Apple when when the, or with a developer when I have to use my iPad <coughs> with the iPhone size screen, but at least it looks better. I'd rather have a clear image then stretch it and I can come back to that with with the Android tablet it kind of decides how it wants to stretch it and then there's a button that says fill screen and it sometimes chops off things I mean I'm, I'm not happy with the OS I'm not it's it's not intuitive and it's it's not usable from from the aspect of I can launch an app and you and and it's easy to use and it looks pretty mm-hmm. it, it looks like like crap, like sparkly stuff on MySpace. <laughs> I haven't seen an Android tablet yet that I've said yes. That is something I'd want to own. That is something I'd pay money for. I didn't even pay money for the touchpad when it was ninety nine dollars. I said I thought about it. I did. I thought closes. about it real long and hard, and then I decided to not buy it because it becomes. And there's still talk of like ninety nine dollar and hundred ninety nine dollar like full size Android tablets, and none of them. I'd rather pay double or triple or even quadruple for an Apple device because it works and because there are apps for it that don't suck and that it's a wonderful user experience. Well, that's the one thing people were saying that that the tablet, if you're going to make a a tablet that's more than one hundred ninety nine dollars, you're not going to survive. I find that hard to believe. If you came out with a tablet that worked and it was an awesome user experience, 
people were going to pay but for it. But if you're coming out with a tablet that's like everybody else's tablet, <laughs> it's for, a knockoff for more than $199, you're not going to make it because you're competing with the Kindle. Right. Fire. You're, you're competing with the, the, the Nook, uh, Nook tablet or whatever it is at $250. Um, yeah. Yeah, and if you're really if you're changed. and if you're up at the five hundred dollar level, Apple is eating your lunch. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean because if you're going to drop five hundred bones on a tablet, you're going to go buy Apple's product. I mean, what do we you're have? Go buy. What do we have over here? You're not going to go buy the Motorola Zoom, Samsung Tab Ten One. Mm-hmm. When Zoom, um, Motorola's releasing like three tablets Playbook. this quarter. Three. Three. Like different sizes different, or different, different specs? S- different sizes and, di- and different specs. Okay. There's two, di- there's two different sizes. Do they realize my mom doesn't care how fast it renders? <laughs> it's two different sizes. There's the, the seven inch and the whatever, nine whatever inch. And there's two models of the nine, the nine inch that are different specs. Mm-hmm. And then all of them will be on Verizon's LTE network. Here's something to throw out there. Uh, kind of more prediction-y. Uh, since we didn't have you on at the year intro, uh, you know, Google bought Motor- Motorola Mobility, so the tablets and even the, I guess the chips for the set top boxes are under that banner. Um, are what are we, are we going to see finally some effects from that this year? Are we going to see tighter integration of? I mean, I know one thing we heard was uh, coming up in Android, they are going to require that you have uh, help me out because i don't know android as, as well but the ui they have to have a standard ui you can put whatever moto blur or whatever on top of it but every phone coming up needs to have that standard ui so you can develop for it i'm guessing that i mean that makes sense because now they want that one of the things is they want all the buttons off the devices yeah and i think that's their answer to screen real estate you could i mean take <clears throat> i would be willing on an iphone or whatever don't give me a center button Mm-hmm. And just let make this part of the screen, and there, there at the bo- at the very bottom would be somewhere where I could touch and navigate. Mm-hmm. I, I think that makes sense, mm-hmm. and it will also create. What'll be interesting is is how all these off manufacturers can actually get away with. Well, mine's a seven point one inch screen. Mine's a seven point three inch screen. I have a four point three inch handset. Things are going to probably start getting chopped off because of aspect ratio. Mm-hmm. So, it, but I think it's a good idea. It creates a uniform experience for the user. If someone calls me on the phone and says, "How do I turn Bluetooth on or off on my iPhone?" It's very easy to walk them through how to turn that on or off. Android. I mean, a lot of the different a lot of the different people have different things loaded on their kids loaded something on there. They, they've made everything look different, and you can't easily walk someone through how to get to certain settings. And on different devices, it's in different places. Mm-hmm. I, I think there there needs to be a uniform experience. That's, that's one of the great things. We, we recently converted my uh, mother and father-in-law to iPhones, bought them the, bought them the free 3GSs there on AT&T. And, and now, because, I mean, we could have easily gotten them an Android phone or a Windows phone, uh, but we'd never be able to support it. You know, why is it doing this? Actually, they, they've had it for about a, both have their phones for about a month. I haven't got a single call, call for anything wrong with the phone that they can't figure out, except why does, why does his phone have four square and mine doesn't yet? And, and I think what, Microsoft's trying to do it right too. They're, they're yeah. going to their hardware vendors and we're, we're not going to give you the OS if you don't meet these, these specs. Yeah, and, and Google's went loose with everything, but you know, that's part of their open source thing, but and, and whatever agreements they have there. No, that's part of their, we're not going to tell you what to do with our OS. Here's our OS. You make it work for yourself. We don't care what it is. Yeah. yeah. And this, kids, is the reason why Linux isn't on your desktop and Linux stays in the server room. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why your Android phone will not be getting ice cream sandwich until mid-2021. This is the reason why (laughs) nobody really wants to develop for Android, but they have to because there's a bazillion Android users. Because teenagers don't have $100 to buy an iPhone. They'd rather have Android because that's what Verizon had before they got the the iPhone. Listen, being open is only as good as your top product. And if this is what's going to happen when you're open, then Android users need to expect to not get things when they get announced. They need to expect to not get good apps when they're announced or when they're written. 
because a developer doesn't want to have to write for your 9-inch tablet, your 10-inch tablet, your 7-inch tablet, your 5-inch Samsung Note, your 4-inch phone, your 4.5-inch phone, whether it's a tablet, whether it's a – that's too many variables. This is how – this is what Windows got into. Yep. And this is what Linux is. And this is why people generally don't want to use them as their daily driver. And this goes back to what Rob and I have talked about on a number of occasions. Don't make your project car your daily driver. And, and this I, is what happens. Android is a project car. And, and I think it'll be interesting to see as, as Sprint subscribers are off contract and it's time for them to renew, as Verizon customers are off contract and it's time for them to renew, where are they going to land? Is Android going to keep that big number? And I, I disagree, AJ. Go, go, um, can you open up modmyeye.com? First off, and it's only with the, the statement that you said. Like, your overall opinion, that's fine. However, I would hardly call Android my project car. If anything, it's my Ford to your Lexus. <laughs> I don't look at it anymore. That's fair. That's actually fair. It's, yeah, it's yeah, fair. I mean, it's it's fine. It'll get you from point A to point B. But there's, I just, I have yet to see. A, to me, I want a unified phone. Oh no, I agree. Well, it's not even being unified. And I had a, I had a Samsung uh, Galaxy S phone at work, and my boss had the Samsung Galaxy S two. Samsung Galaxy S, Samsung Galaxy S2. Those are the same make, the same manufacturer, just different versions. They have different UIs, different setting locations, different button locations. How am I, as an Android user, supposed to go, how am I supposed to say, you know what? I want to upgrade my phone. I'm going to upgrade to the next version. And it's completely different. Mm-hmm. Well, not, but I, I stayed with the same phone. I don't like the, the Ford to Lexus comment because... Everyone, everyone you hear says, well, yeah, I have the droid and, and I like it and it's good. But, you know, I have to do this little extra thing to make it work or I have to do this. I can go I'm buy a four door. Gonna, you know, what? I hit the button or I turn the key and it turns on. I'm afraid it's going to kill me when that droid sound goes <laughs> off. Oh, you know, uh, but, it, it, you had this chart. You went yeah, and, to and show it, here. You know, I found this chart interesting because in, in the fourth quarter, I mean, you see the the Android OS sales. Which is the green drop, line. Which is the green line. And the iOS device, it's mainly the 4S, go up. Gee, what happened in the fourth as, quarter? As RIM, as RIM continues to drop <laughs> to almost nothing. <laughs> Hold Mike, on. I actually heard, I actually, I don't know if you can hear the sound. If you listen very closely, you can hear RIM. <laughs> <laughs> And I think I think it'll be a, a telltale. I mean, if, if someone wants to make a run for it for the market, now is Microsoft chance. Microsoft's chance. I mean, they mm-hmm. released devices on T-Mobile yesterday. They're coming out with the, with the device on the AT and T network. Mm-hmm. First they LTE, already have first LTE. First LTE. Uh, they already have um, a device on the Verizon network. I mean, I think I and the and the the device is solid. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not but, kludgy. I mean, you're seeing here. I mean, those, those numbers rose as... Oh, that's Chachi. Right. <laughs> those numbers rose as as everybody was waiting that longer Listen. time for that net last I, I, iPhone. Okay. I, got the way. I have an Android. All yes. Right? We all know which way I lean. Mm-hmm. But when you're releasing 400 phones... Of course, your sales are going to be up. I mean, look at look at <laughs> just look up phones at CES. It is ridiculous, and and it's all it's all this noise again pushed out there, and it's all static. If it's Apple all is releasing, the same. it's an i it's a Windows phone that does this, 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 and this, which is the same as this and this, but it's different than this, this, and this. It's a Windows phone that's this, this, and this. You know, I mean, it's just a bunch of phones. Hey, Sony's got a phone, and what makes this really different than anything else that you see that's out there? But, I mean, in all fairness, if Apple's releasing their iPhone in the second quarter, mm-hmm. of course Android is going to blow them out of the water in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. All of their sales have already happened. Right, I, and I agree. But I think that's where I think that's where Microsoft could actually come in for once and snatch up market share. So, so everybody needs to basically look. We know when, when Apple is going to release a phone. 
Let's make sure we put our best stuff out there those other three quarters while everybody's waiting for the next one or considering if the next Rim one. Because everybody Rim smart, knows when it's going to happen. If Rim were smart... They'd release a good phone to begin with. Well, yeah. But they would, <laughs> they would, think, they would do the market research <laughs> and find out what quarter Android is down. Yeah. And release their new Blackberries then. When I accept um, whatever they you're, you're expecting the them to make logical buy. business decisions, and clearly they're not capable of that either. <laughs> yeah, so. I know. Rob, what's that, Rob? Well, having to do some analysis. It, no matter how strategic Grim is, it's still <laughs> going to be a piece of garbage. Nobody's going to buy but it. I, yeah, exactly. But I think that's where Microsoft could come in and actually take some market share. It has to be a perfect storm. Their, of their device is uniform stuff. across platforms. Whether whether you're the HTC company making the device, the Nokia or Nokia. Is yeah, what is this? What is, it? what is the Nokia? Uh, nobody Nokia. knows how to pronounce it. Is that? I don't. I don't. I. I don't. What is the correct way? I guess I Steve Ballmer always, was saying it that Nokia. way. Nokia. It was all Nokia. 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 Or, Nokia. Oh yes, <laughs> we're having this phone. It's this. this it's our new phone. It's the uh, Nokia. Hang on, I've got a pronunciation <laughs> chart here. That way. <laughs> pronunciation chart. <laughs> It's Finnish, and I don't know how to read the pronunciation <laughs> chart. But Is there I, any, any Finnish speakers in the audience out there? But you even saw it. You even saw uh, it. Yes, actually, this is the new Borka Borka Bork Schubiter. Oh, wait, that's oh, Swedish. Sorry, everybody. Swedish, yeah. oh. but, Swedish but, not Finnish. But Rem even did it with, with their menuing system. If, with with three devices that were launched simultaneously running the same OS version, the pretty same. much. If you go, If you went into settings... And then you went into, I think it was sometimes remote, the, the device wipe was under security, and sometimes it was under advanced settings. Mm -hmm. Don't move everything around. Make it the same across your devices. Exactly. exactly. No, I, uh, in the chat room, I've seen this. of Tech said if Android is Ford and Apple's Lexus, does that make Rim the reliant Robin? To which AJ responded Rim is a go kart with a broken engine and steering wheel that only turns left. I disagree with that. <laughs> Rim would be that car sitting in that sketchy alley up on cinder blocks <laughs> with every part taken off of it. And that's the way it's it's a, it, that no, that's what it looks like when you roll it off the lot. Oh, so nothing was actually taken. It's just it came that way. Yeah. Exactly. Excellent. And it's got that stupid mouse thing that nobody. And I'll tell you what though. <laughs> a dr uh, or a, a, any of the RIM devices, their battery life is amazing, and that's the one thing that people will continue to tout is, yeah, I, if I underclock my processor and, and barely have any graphics and anything, my phone will last for, I know, for three days as well. I know there was a, on this prediction show for the Daily, Vaynerchuk was talking about, he's a big BlackBerry head, and he's like, this is the year, it's not going to be enough that I can type easy with those little buttons uh, to, to save RIM. They're getting bought or they're going out of business yeah. this year. So. And Microsoft looked at him. Yeah, Microsoft for a, for a moment. For a moment, and they realized we got our own problems. <laughs> um, on that note, I think we gotta head out here. We gotta go uh, talk some wrestling on the Mayhem Show. Uh, but thank, thank you guys for coming in. I think we had. Was a, great. I think we covered the first uh, several hours of CES that we witnessed uh, pretty adequately here. Um, uh, you know, via other other scenes. Um, so uh, let's go around. Hey AJ, what's going on with you? I can't hear a thing. <laughs> what what are you plugging? There it is. There, there it is. is. I had no sound at all. I'm I had going, no sound oh, too. Uh, uh, yeah, no, like plug broke my plug everything for a minute there. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm plugging. At AJ Koftik on Twitter. Follow me there. And I tweet there. Actually, a lot more than I used to. So Excellent. Watch me there. Chill out. Hey, I'm not plugging much, but you know, I'm just gonna move to the cloud. I'm gonna go live in the cloud. In the cloud, everything. And I showed you that new cloud video uh, oh, cloud. editing suite. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's called Wee Video. I actually, you know, I'll bring it up here real quick. We don't have time. <laughs> Put it. But in no, post. it's kind of cool. Put it in post. There it is, right there. It's it's a Wii, not as a Nintendo Wii, as in you and me Wii video. And you upload your stuff. It's like iMovie in the cloud. I, I kind of want to play with it. Yeah, so I'm interested. Chachi, I'm, Chachi, let's go make a video in the cloud. But you're talking no. about online or on live. I mean, I think that if I don't have to wait processor and memory and There's everything on my side, I'm, throw, I'm moving to the cloud. Exactly. I told exactly. you I quit. You quit. <laughs> yes, I told you before the show started. Is I that quit. an app? Before you I quit, quit, can you plug your stuff? Oh, uh, the only thing I'm plugging is ChachiPlays.com. It's the only thing important I have Go going donate. on right now. What's when is it? 
February 10th and 11th. What is it? It's a 24-hour game song. Who benefits? Uh, Father Ryan Art Center and Tunzium. Why? To provide art program for underprivileged children. Good job. Rob, what's going on with you? Um, I, uh... No one cares. Probably going to South by Southwest. (laughs) Excellent. Are we going to have a live report there? Sure. Are you going to crowd surf? No. Does that still happen? Yes. Yes? (laughs) You're just going to conduct all of your your conversations and interviews from here on out? What? (laughs) Like what you did to Chachi? Yes. Okay. I have questions. You have answers. Uh, it's going to be really hard when I do this to myself here in a second, though. Uh, hey, guys, it is uh, this is the awesome cast, and uh, I really hope you've enjoyed our coverage you suck. of stuff. And Chachi's just negative. Just just negative. Uh, again, you know, hey, follow us at AwesomeCast. I'm at Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com for all the crazy stuff going on there. Um, and I say, give us a, drop us emails at uh, contact at awesomecast.com, 724-25-ACAST, 724-252-2278. If you want to drop on, on the phone line, we're on the Google Pluses, we're on the Facebooks. So, uh, and we put a lot of stories that we uh, tend to talk about uh, through the week. So be sure to get your comments in and uh, we might read them on the show. We do that from time to time. Uh, go subscribe to us over on your iTunes, on your Blip TV, on your uh, YouTube uh, so you can find us. You can watch us on your Xbox thing via YouTube. That's so cool. Um, and, uh, hey, you know, uh, like us, uh, star us, comment, uh, review us, whatever you're watching on us provides so you can let other people know uh, how much you're enjoying or not enjoying the show. We like criticism. I wonder what happens if I bing if I bing awesome cast on my connect. That sounds dirty. It does sound. <laughs> dirty. I know this is sort for the guys, and uh, we've had an awesome chat room going I all would, night here. I would bang awesome I, cast. I, you bang. would bang awesome bing. cast. Yeah. Bing, 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 awesome cast. That too. Uh, I learned. I learned, <laughs> I learned Yahoo everything. I just want to say I learned from uh, the chat room last night uh, tonight uh, that AJ is the Andy Rooney of the show. Uh, <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> They've been awesome. You've been you're an awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Yeah, the